Hi, this is the walkthrough video for the capacitor simulation activity. So there are four pages in total and before you watch this video, you should have finished this lab already. And here will be the answers. So let's get to the simulation. Click light bulb and then enable everything. Okay, but then actually some of them are not necessary. Part A asks you how to obtain the greatest and smallest possible capacitance. So the thing that you really have to do uh, it's just to really explore and look at the capacitance here. So, uh, well, basically you should see that the battery doesn't affect anything, obviously. And in case you have learned capacitance already and obviously you know, uh, the thing that only affects it is going to be the area and also the separation distance. So for the greatest one, you should have smallest distance and the greatest plate area. So you can write it down like this and the value of the greatest capacitance is 1.77 pico F according to the simulation. And so uh, the other way around should be giving you the smallest capacitance which is 0 0.09. Okay, so here you go. In question two, state the relevant formula. And so obviously that is the equation that you should have learned at the very beginning of this chapter. That is C equals to absolute a over d part b asking you about electric fuel and what you can do is you can connect the capacitor to the battery if you didn't and by default it should have been connected and if you increase the battery you can see that you see some black arrows between the plates and those are representing the electric fuel because if you try to toggle it you can see you know, that obviously is the electric fuel and uh, just from a very basic understanding of how to represent the fuel line you should know that the density of the fuel lines should represent the magnitude that means the fuel strength so these are the words that you can put down question two describe how you can obtain the greatest and smallest possible electric fuel strength so that means you want to make the most arrow and the least arrow and obviously uh, for the least arrow obviously is going to be zero v so there's nothing all right you can't be worse than having nothing here because uh they well technically you can say negative but then in terms of magnitude right the worst is zero so zero v will give you zero electric field strength as for the greatest if you try to see just by the battery obviously the more voltage you have uh, the more dense the lines will be and then if you just try to play around with this and that is you know the original idea when I designed this worksheet is you just explore it right so you can try to put them together and you can see that all right the fuel lines are much denser and that's definitely something to do with how the charge are now attracting each other on like between the two plates and uh, for the area actually you should be able to observe that it is irrelevant right because if you have small area or bigger area that doesn't affect the density. If you can't see it properly, you can see it like this, right? Try to see that this doesn't affect the density. So the magnitude doesn't matter, right, for the area. Okay, so this is the wording that you can use. Uh, greatest electric fusion can be obtained by greatest voltage of the cell or EMF of the cell with the smallest separation distance of the plate. So obviously if you want to obtain the least then you, you just reverse these two. Uh, you may want to also add that the area has no effect on the electric field strength. Question 3 states the relevant equation. Uh, even if you haven't learned the actual equation um, or if you forget, you can actually guess because from what we find out, then we can find out E which is the symbol for electric field strength is proportional to V and then it is proportional to 1 over D so in fact if you combine them that is the equation so uh, you should find E equals to V over D probably uh, more precisely is delta V over delta D and that is the equation you have learned in chapter 10 about fuel electric field so that would be the equation here uh, we'll have a negative here uh, because something to do with the sign because it's go from positive to negative but that is um, not relevant when we only talk about magnitude so you can ignore it if you want to 
part C voltage. This is the part where it gets interesting. So um, I ask you do whatever you can to find the largest possible voltage across a capacitor. So uh, my hint has given to you. All right, that is not just 1.5. I mean, if you do this, then it's just 1.5. But the thing is, I mean, if you try to play around with this, uh, obviously you are not going to discharge. That is the next part. Uh, you are just doing this, and what you can do, like is simply changing the separation and area. So if you try that, you can try to see, uh, you don't see anything, right? I mean, if you try to do like this, uh, I don't know why this is, oh, I think this is out of, oh, okay, because of the pro, <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but then if you try to move them around, you don't, you don't see them changing, right? So the trick is you charge it first, okay? keep it in the middle and that's why there's a switch allows you to go like in the middle not doing this charge or charging and then if you try to change it this is the magic right can you see that the voltage go to 7.5 if I go smaller wow 30 V so this is something that you can do and you can change the voltage so apparently uh, making them closer doesn't help, right? I should make them further apart, All right? 30 V, and then area, yeah, I want to make it smaller, okay? So I think I had started it well because I started with close and big, right? So now I kind of do the opposite. So I think this should be the greatest one. Okay, so if you want to, you can start it over All right, normally you shouldn't do this. I mean, if you have a 30V connected to a battery, I'm not sure if the battery would be exploded. Okay, so if we do try, let's say, uh, what do we want? Let's say this. Okay, and then we charge it up to 1.5. Okay, I just try randomly, really. like try to explore. And then, this will become smaller which is great and then when we try to make them smaller it's back to 1.2 so i think i shouldn't start like that um i should probably like them to be further apart but then small at the first place i think right if you want to obtain the smallest one well in fact smaller one is simply v but then i mean if you try to manipulate this so that changing it from 1.5 well, why is it negative oh because i switched the probe okay so um putting them closer will be less v okay and making them further up wow okay no never mind okay so it's 0 0.075 0, 0 0.0 yeah 0 0.075 uh for a non-zero smallest voltage you can obtain so back to the question, the answer you should put on should be 30V. You can try again different combination and again I believe it should be 30V. And the way that we should do is uh, we should start with, okay I'll show you again, we'll start with um, charging it with 1.5V. You want to charge as much as possible obviously. And then I think this is the way, right? And then uh, what we'll have to do is starting from this with the greatest area and smaller separation then you separate them further and making them smaller okay and that to achieve 30 V okay so here will be the wording if you want to copy or double check so we'll have to set the capacitor to have the greatest area and smaller separation distance in fact you should realize that with this then you can get a most charge as possible to begin with okay and then we also of course uh, set voltage as high as possible also for the sake of having more charge to begin with and then we'll have to uh, change the switch to neutral change it to the middle so then uh, it will keep the charge basically and then we'll have to change the separation distance to greater so separate them as much as possible and the area to be as small as possible 
uh, of course this is really something you can do in reality uh, but then for area it's not so realistic because you can't really somehow like magically change I mean you don't have a magic hand to somehow make something become smaller accidentally but then uh, for separation is okay you can separate them uh, manually in uh, practice for question three, you can have two different approaches. One is by using simply the formula related to capacitor. You can explain that. Uh, if you have learned about the analogy that I taught you probably in the class, uh, saying that capacitor is like a bucket containing water, uh, you can use that approach as well. So uh, try maybe pause the video and think about on both approaches. A few moments later, all right, let me go with the traditional formula approach first. Um, apparently, we will be using, guess what, the equation of capacitor, which is C equals to Q over V, as well as another equation, C equals to epsilon A over D, both of them. At the very beginning of our steps, we connect it to the cell, right? So one thing that you should understand is that um, once we set up the battery, no matter how we change the separation or the area, is always the same voltage because that is maintained by the cell, by the battery. So the voltage is always the same. So that's why when you are doing this, V is a constant. Okay, and what you are adjusting is adjusting Q. And if we want to get Q to be greater, we will have to get C to be greater. And according to the equation on the right hand side, if you want to get C to be greater, then we will have to get area to be greater and D to be smaller. So this is exactly what we have done, okay, to get more charge like this. Great area, small distance. The next thing that we do is to go to neutral and in terms of the equation, if we try to consider the equation again, then this time we will have charge to be fixed. Because think about this, when you have the switch to be in neutral, there's no way that they can go. Okay, of course in reality, they would slowly dissipate in the air probably, like very slowly, very slowly. But then here in the simulation, since you are not connected to battery or the light bulb, they have no way to go and so the charge can be maintained and so since we want to increase the voltage as much as possible this is simply the mission that I gave you right like a random mission according to the equation that means you have to decrease the capacitance as much as possible and so in this case looking at the right equation here then you want to lower the C that means you want to lower the A and increase the D and again that is exactly what we have done to obtain 30 V as for the analogy using the bucket what you can think about is uh, we initially have a great bucket and a huge bucket okay a huge bucket at the very beginning uh, it is with a very large base area because the base area is representing capacitance basically and then we of course still want to add the water which is the charge into it as much as possible so that the height will be representing the V that we have so that means also V initially should be as much as possible so that you can get more water uh, inside this bucket and then what happened is um, you do not allow the water to go out or any new water to go in okay and that is the same as you switch to neutral then what you do is a magic somehow you can manipulate the size of the bucket while the water volume the total amount of water is remain constant and by doing that so that the V, that means the height of the water, will increase. Okay, and obviously, what you can do is to make the bucket with as more 
base area as possible so that it become more like a vertical cylinder and so the water inside will kind of squeeze okay to I mean there's no way you can go I mean so if you imagine uh, that the bucket of course assuming the water will not flow out <laughs> and what you can do is magically squeeze the base area to be as small as possible because what you do is making capacitance smaller and so in this case there's no other way that water can go and so the new V has to be much much greater than the previous so this is a way that you can understand uh, with the analogy Pass D is about discharging so what you have to do is simply switch it wow I'm not sure if 30V will, will explode wow 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 okay so yeah that's something that you may observe or if this is too much then just go for 1.5V yeah so something you can see is the voltage initially it decreased so fast but at the end it doesn't go as fast alright so here will be the wording if you want to take reference with for question 2 it asks you to state the one of an equation uh, which is something you have learned already well for some of you if you already explore the later page of the booklet like here then obviously you can tell directly that the equation is V equal to V log E to the power of negative T over LC and so uh, using it you can explain that when T increase this whole thing become more negative right more negative means this become bigger and if this become bigger the whole thing will become smaller and if this whole thing becomes smaller multiply with V log which is the initial voltage then obviously eventually will become zero so this is the equation if you already explore later part but that I would say is a cheater you can still try to tell the qualitative relationship uh, without using these kind of complicated equation so you can start with Ohm's law okay uh, remember the light bulb is the resistor in our circuit and that is the only one so it is fixed and at the very beginning you have a certain V for the capacitor and for a certain I current that is running and as for current it is the change of charge over time and apparently the charge is flowing out of the capacitor so in this case by using C equals to Q over V the uh, formula for capacitor the Q is decreasing obviously while the capacitance doesn't change I mean that is fixed when we are uh, discharging and so the only consequence is having V to decrease so the V eventually will get smaller and smaller and so that's why we can tell V is getting smaller and causing I to become smaller and if I is getting smaller the power will get smaller because P equals to I square R R is fixed so if I is decreasing power will also be decreasing over time so using these four equations you can also guess this has to be the qualitative consequence the last question here asks you how to keep the discharge time as long as possible so if you try to look at this equation you can find out the answer very easily because uh, when t equals or tends to infinity this means the end obviously so if you want to slow it down then you want to get this fraction to be bigger right so if you imagine r times c let's say is 100 versus 1000 and let's say you you already spend 10 seconds onto it then this will become 1 over 10 or this one will become 1 over 100 which is smaller all right so this slide is similar to the time didn't get passed for that long so from this equation you can guess that uh, r times c to be bigger then that will give you longer discharge time of course uh, you can also do trial and error 
in your simulation and you should find out the same thing or you can also think about guess what the analogy again so when you're discharging it's like having again the water bucket uh, leaking right the water so the water somehow there's a hole maybe leak out and obviously if you want this leaking time to be as long as possible you have to have a lot of water that's for sure because if you don't have any water there's nothing for you to leak so you want to have more water so that means your water has to be big enough so that explains why C you want to be bigger the second thing is you don't want the flow rate to be too big because imagine if the flow rate is like rushing throughout the bucket then very soon you will run out of water inside the bucket so you want the rate full rate to be small that is relevant to i right and if you try to recall v equals to i out then if you want the i to be small then you can get r to be big in this case so um that is also coincide with what we have observed from this equation as for the simulation, unfortunately, you don't get to change the resistance of the light bulb. So, yeah, unfortunately, you can't do that. So what you could do is uh, to simply get as much, much charge as possible. Uh, and, and then you want to get the C to be as big as possible. So, yeah, I think that is the way. So you can see that it is getting very slowly and well actually I should show you the change so you can see that it is dropping and it is dropping slowly and even more slowly okay let's stop this and I wonder what if I get to 30V like the previous part and then for this one the C is small right because it's yeah the C is small so the discharge time should be quick let's, let's see yeah you can see that the discharge time is so fast and that is all for the walkthrough I hope this simulation lab can help you to visualize what's happening about the capacitor in the circuit if you find it helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in the next video bye